Hi, I'm Monica and let's see how good my prediction skills are. In today's video, I wanted to go back to my 2022 five-star book predictions video and see which books that I picked out in that video were actually five stars and if I actually did like them. I'll be dividing this video up into the books that I didn't manage to get to, the books that disappointed me, the books that were just okay, and the books that I loved. If you want to skip to any part of this video, there will be timestamps in the description box. I will also have another video up discussing about my 2023 five-star book predictions up within a couple of days or so. Let's just start with the books that I didn't manage to read. First up, I didn't manage to get to Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bouley. So this one is a YA thriller and there are indigenous characters in this book and I did really want to get to this one but I think it slipped to my mind because when I don't really see a book on my shelf at eye level, I don't tend to pick it up. I really want to tackle this one this year. This one follows a biracial teenager who is half white and half indigenous and she witnesses a murder and she gets wrapped up in that murder's investigation. This one I read has really strong themes of community and as well as reconnecting to indigenous roots and I really did want to tackle this one later on this year and I will hopefully rate this one five stars. The next book that I didn't read was A Sky Beyond the Storm by Saba Tahir. This is book four and the final book in the Ember in the Ashes Quartet. This one follows Layla who lives in a very brutal world and with her people now being enslaved by the Marshall Empire. And Layla, she infiltrates the Black Cliff Academy to save her brother who has been captured and tortured. This one I really really did want to get to and I did hope it was five stars. And this is actually one of my goals for 2023 to finish a book series and this was one of them that I mentioned in that video. I really do have high hopes for this book and I hope everything gets wrapped up and that we get Elias and Layla maybe to get together by the end and also to see the resolution of the kingdoms and politics and all that. Now onto the books that disappointed me and I only have one book on this list it's quite unfortunate that this one made that list and it is Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. This one is part of a YA sci-fi series. This is book three of that series. I did end up rating this one a three out of five stars. I really did have high expectations for this installment but it just fell short of my expectations and my reasoning for that was that there was constant world building in this book. Brandon Sanderson is brilliant at what he does with his world building skills and his really in-depth characters but I felt for the sci-fi series it just felt really redundant from book one and book two because our main character Spensa who is on the cover she's just hopping from planet to planet and I understand it's to expand the universe that this world takes place in, but if it could have been done on a quicker timeline, that would have been a lot better for me. And if you don't know what the series is about, we're following Spensa, who lives on a alien planet that is being bombarded by aliens. Spensa, she really wants to become a pilot, but because of her father's history, she has some difficulties getting into flight school. And Svensa also manages to find a spaceship that has AI intelligence that has become sentient. <laughs> so there is also that. Overall, I thought this book was a lot of filler, but we did get a lot of character development. I had high expectations for this book, but I didn't meet them. Next up are the books that are pretty good, but they didn't quite manage to make it to five stars because of a couple of things that I had issues with. First up on this list was The City of Brass by S.A. Chakaborty. I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars, I think. This book explores racial and religious tensions, brewing clan warfare, and centuries of Jin history. The main thing I really did like about this book was the two different main points of views that we receive and they show you different parts of the Jin world. So first up we have Nahri who is a Shafit. That means she's a half human, half Jin. At the beginning of the book, we meet her when she's living in Cairo, Egypt and she's a grifter. So she steals from the rich and she earns her living that way. From her perspective, we learn about the Jin world from an outsider point of view. With our second point of view, we have Ali, who is a Deva prince, and he lives in Devabad, which is where all the Jin people live. 
Through him, we learn about the different political and religious tensions among the Jin clans within the Jin world and from a perspective of someone who grew up in that world. I think my main point of contention in this book was that the world building took a lot of time to make it to a point where you could just read without thinking about the world structure itself. I felt it was quite slow moving from that point, from the beginning into like 50% of the way through and then the book just flies from there. But I do have to give credit to the author for building such a rich and lush world and her writing is very easy to read. There is also wonderful Muslim representation, Middle Eastern settings, and POC main characters. Next up, I have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This one is an adult literary fiction novel and if you're not familiar with Taylor Jenkins Reid, she really likes to dive in deep with characters. With this book, we are following the Riva family. This family rose up to fame after being down on their luck in their childhood. We're following the four siblings of the Rivas through a course of one night where a party gets out of control, secrets get revealed. The best thing I loved about this book was the family dynamics and we see how no matter how complex their lives get, they're still a family at the end of the day and they still love and support each other. A lot of their problems stem from their childhood and I, I would say like the main driving force of this novel is Nina who is the eldest and she acts like a mother figure to her three younger siblings. This book does take place in Malibu and it was really fun to learn about the sport of surfing because I'm not familiar with it. And I really like how the chapters were timed so you would read each chapter would be a new hour of the party. It was a nice way to build up the tension until you reach the climax of the novel and overall I was very satisfied with this one. Next, I read Ace of Spades by Ferda Apika Iriime and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This one is a YA mystery thriller and I think some people categorize this one as dark academia. I didn't really think it was but I guess it can qualify for it. This book takes place in a private academy and we're following the two top students of the school, Devon and Chiamaka. While they are both great academically, they both have deep dark secrets that they don't want anyone to know about. But once those secrets get blasted out to the school, everything that they worked so hard for for their future is on the line. The one who leaked their secrets is going by the name of Aces and Aces is targeting the only two black students at this school. Which leads to the discussion of racism, severe bullying, white supremacy, and homophobia. However, there is fantastic LGBTQ rep and POC rep. And with Devon and Chiamaka, once they learn about the targeted harassment against them, at first they're like, it's not because of our skin color, but then they realize that it actually is. Once they understood that, they really fought back against their bullies. Throughout the book, I was cheering them on to stand up for themselves and they do do that. I do recommend this book if you're looking for an intense mystery with underlying important topics being discussed, I would recommend Ace of Spades. The next book that I did read was Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is a YA fantasy with Chinese mythology influences. We follow our protagonist Shigori who is a princess of Kiara and she has hidden magic but that magic is revealed on her wedding day. So once she runs away, she runs into her stepmother who knows about her magic and transforms Shiori's six brothers into cranes and basically threatens Shiori if she speaks of this to anyone, she will kill off her brothers one by one. And Shiori agrees with her stepmother and then Shiori is then cast out of her kingdom and she's forced to be a mute otherwise her brothers will die. <laughs> Throughout this book, we're following Shiori through her kingdom and trying to find a way to break this curse and free her people and her brothers. I really loved how the world of Kiara was brought to life with its own customs, traditions, and culture. The writing really did make this world very easy to digest and it takes on a fairy tale atmosphere. With Shiori, she very is much a strong protagonist and we see her understand where she comes from when she is interacting with people of her kingdom like villagers 
and seeing that she does come from a place of privilege and that she does want to enact good for her kingdom. Of course, with her six brothers, there is that strong familiar bond. Overall, this book had great action, good plot, and a hint of romance. So I really am excited to see what happens in the second book in this duology. Next on my five-star predictions list was House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas and I ended up rating this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. For this one, I do have a full in-depth discussion review. If you're interested in that, I will link it down below. But for House of Sky and Breath, this is book two in the Crescent City series and this is Sarah J Maas's first adult fantasy series and I really did enjoy House of Earth and Blood and I did expect to enjoy this one as well. We are following Bryce Quinlan who is a half human, half fae. She's intelligent, sharp-witted, and she gets wrapped into a murder investigation that she doesn't really want to help solve within book one. From the start of House and Sky and Breath book two, we are continuing with our journey with Bryce and we also have different points of views as well. Within book two, we do have stronger character development, more world building, amazing cinematic action sequences, and intense revelations. However, the reason why I took off half a star was that I did want more structure to the plot instead of just info dumping. But overall, I had a lot of fun reading this book and I get really excited to see how all the revelations at the end of book two and the consequences of that will play out in book three. <laughs> Okay, and finally on to the books that I loved and the books that I rated 5 stars. First up on my predictions list, I did include Legendborn by Tracy Theon. I've been talking about Legendborn so much on my channel lately and I rated this one a 5 out of 5 stars. If you don't know what Legendborn is about, it is a YA dark academia fantasy book. This book really did surprise me in a good way. It has a perfect blend of fantasy and it also discusses topics of racism and colonialism but Tracy Dion did it in such a way and with care into a very fantastic series and I really do give respect to her for doing that and we do follow our main character Bree Matthews who has been enrolled in an early college program on the campus of the University of North Carolina and on her first night on campus she witnesses a magical flying demon attack she quickly finds out that there is a secret society with students called Legendborn who fights off demons and monsters. In Brie, she wants to join this secret society for personal reasons. So I really did have a lot of thoughts on this book and I do have a really in-depth review on Legendborn. So if you're interested in that, I will link that down below as well. And onto some of my general thoughts. Um, the magic system isn't very complex to understand and it is inspired from King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table legend. I absolutely love the dark academia setting with the demons running around, supernatural powers, secret societies, and a murder mystery as well. Our main character Brie, she is the definition of black girl magic and her journey with grief is very raw and real. Other characters that I did really love were Nick, Cell, and William. They were all fantastic, especially our love interests. And I would say that there is incredible payoff as well as action scenes. Even with 500 pages, it did not read like 500 pages. Like I read it so quickly. And within book two, we do see Brie really get into her own with her powers and exploring more of her past. Overall, I'm really excited for book three in this series. And Legendborn as a first book was fantastic and I really do highly recommend it. The last book on my prediction list of 2022 was Jade City by Fonda Lee and I rated this one a 5 out of 5 stars. This is an adult urban fantasy. I absolutely love the mix of supernatural elements as well with technology with guns, cars. In this book, we're following two crime syndicates who have control over the island of Kekon. We are mainly following the Call family clan and we see that there is very increasing tensions with the rival clan and there might be a clan war on the horizon. What makes this even more interesting is that there are green bones. These are supernaturally gifted warriors and they are powered by Jade. With the supernatural element, it wasn't over jarring and I really liked the mix of the Asian culture into this island that has its own 
different culture, traditions, and laws. The best part of this book was the growing tensions between the two clans, the Nopik clan, which is the Kaul family, and the Mountain clan. We see small skirmishes and betrayals between the two clans that really nicely built up the tension between them two into the full blown out war. While reading this book, you really don't know who to trust and anyone could betray our main characters. And our characters are all part of the Kaul family and we have four different points of views. We follow the perspectives of Lan, Shay, Hilo, and their cousin Anden. Each point of view is very well balanced and they have their own distinct voice and the family dynamics between them are very complex. There might be a few sibling rivalries here and there. The other thing that I really enjoyed was the clan structure itself because we have three main people at the top of the clan. You have your leader, you have your business head, and you have your crime head, and it's really nice to see how they make decisions based on either they want to go through the diplomacy route or the violence route. Also, the writing itself was very descriptive and very immersive, and I'm really excited to get to the rest of this trilogy. So those were all the results of my five-star book predictions from last year, and I have to say that <laughs> my prediction skills aren't the best. Although there were some hits and misses, I'm quite happy about how much I read from this list, and I do hope to continue that with my 2023 predictions list, which will have, I think, seven or eight books that will be up quite soon. With that all being said, I do want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and added a few books onto your TBR. Also, don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye!